Welcome to our uh, presentation of the print suite, the roadmap, and what's new in 4.3, uh, which will be released uh, very soon. The new version of the print suite. Are you aware of our release mug host? Yes, I do. I've seen it for the first time just a minute ago. You want to have it? You know how to get it? <laughs> uh, with a quiz. Well... Yeah, first first chart. How is this called? This thing? Neo Vice? Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> that was too easy. Please explain what Neo Vice is. This is the new huh? huh? <laughs> the comet. Uh, the new the, the comet by which the new UI is uh, named. Yes, the beautiful comet. But it's above all the new UI for business users of the print suite as a replacement for the print, uh, print planner. Finally, a modern, up-to-date UI. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is a correct um, objection. <laughs> This is a correct objection, and this is why the emphasis is on. I don't know whether the uh, question by Volker Gutz was heard by everyone. The new UI is fine. By uh, do don't we have the facets? This has to do with our release target. We said we will now first focus on the business users, ensure that they have a modern UI, and faceting is um, still more on the admin side in our world. And um, this uh, will be available in the next gray box. But this year, we have focused on the business users. And maybe, Gabi, you can talk about what this means. We've learned one thing. It doesn't have faceting. Yeah, but what can you do with it? In NeoWise, you can uh, manage publications um, uh, new subfiles, create new documents, set attributes for the documents. So this is the first point. Then uh, w there are web-based functions um, for uh, assigning data, how you plan products, for instance, for the review process later, uh, set um, uh, notes, for instance, on the documents. And you can also control the InDesign server in the PDF renderer and do updating of documents. All of this is possible in NeoWise. And apart from that, we have production monitoring to see how far you've come with your production, what is done, what's uh, in time, what needs to be done, where do we have to invest more HR to make it work out, and also task management of the individual individual users. So which users do the various users to perform? This can all be done with Neowise. And then let's have a look at the details. This is Neowise. Some of you will have seen it before. This is the publication panel. And what you see here... Just wait a minute. Yeah, the, the clicker, the red dot doesn't appear. Um, in the center, you can see the list of publications and on the right-hand side, the overview of uh, reviews uh, where you can see the state of the documents. And uh, when we click further, the publications can be edited here. So the detail panel can be opened up on the right-hand side. This is a general principle we have in NeoWise. There's always a detail panel that should be opened on the right-hand side. In the center, the global overview, and, the, and on the right-hand side, you can see the, the details in a detail panel. Well, th but these functionalities already exist. Yeah, this is all already included in 4.2. This was not new. Um, this is all known. And we believe that some who are unaware of the uh, 4.2 release should listen to this. Is there anything new? Or is, is this all yesterday's news? 
Yes, there's something new included here as well. Uh, new in the publication window is that you can create and upload uh, uh, sample documents. This didn't exist in 4.2. You always had to go back to the old print planner to create a sample or show document. You can do this here now. In the publication window, um, I, you can also show it in, in a list uh, form. Is there another module where you can look at uh, publications apart from the publication window? Yes, the flat plan. This is a new concept that did not exist uh, before in the planner. Uh, well, let's have a look at it. This is the flat plan. And here you can have an overview of all of the documents included with all of the pages. Uh, this is a preview of all of the individual pages. And um, yeah, I'll do it with my finger. Um, what you see here are the documents and you probably see the icons for each individual document. There are various icons. And here you can see the square and the triangle um, uh, icon. This is different document types. This was introduced before 4.2. The, uh, these are static documents. Static means a static number of pages. And we have dynamic documents. These are documents where the number of pages result from the content. So the number of pages can grow. So this is two different document types that we see marked here. And we can also see whether documents are blocked or can be um, uh, accessed and uh, edited. When somebody uses them, they are blocked. And if not, the lock is open. And then you can actually uh, access these documents and edit them. What you can also do here, individual documents can be opened and edited. Um, and this is done with the Edit button. OK. And then this opens up. Yeah? Uh, intermediate questions are more than welcome. <laughs> yes. Um, here we are in the flat plan editor where we can edit the individual documents. Here you can see the list planning. This is where we plan products for the document. And we see the list of products here on the right hand side. We've got the content, um, the entity as provided by our entity model and um, and uh, all types of buckets can be pushed over to the center to the list and can select the templates with which uh, the products are to be created. I have a question, Gabby. Um, what are these six bubbles at the bottom and the second one is highlighted? What is this? Ah, here, the stages. Oh, this is also a new concept that we introduced with Neowise. The stages describe the different steps to be taken to edit a document in the publication process. We start with uh, the preparation stage. This is what we already skipped. The, this is the preparation where you set metadata and you define what uh, should uh, be the document filter. Then the second second uh, stage is the content assignment. This is where we lay down which products uh, should be featured in the groups. Then there is a layout stage where typically in InDesign somebody actually embellishes the document. And then there's a review uh, stage for the proofreading and then finishing for the last jobs. And then the delivery where the PDF is created and the document is probably sent to the print shop or maybe only to the website as we saw it before. So these are the... No, this is not, this cannot be configured. This is a fixed um, process flow. You can skip the individual uh, stages. You do not have to use them consecutively. This is all buttons, basically, the bubbles. And with these uh, buttons, you can actually jump backward and forwards. Who asked this question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Timo, uh, could you please uh, ask this uh, question later when we uh, talk about uh, workflows? Be uh, because this can be configured, but the document stages cannot be configured. Why is this so? Uh, 
Well, we always got the feedback for years by customers and partners that um, uh, they, they love about the principle that uh, it is like the Swiss knife by MacGyver. You can do everything with it. But on the other hand, it is very complex for the implementation, on the other hand, for the business user. And this is why we decided, and this was the, the market feedback that we uh, shared, uh, that f we should simplify it for the business user. And uh, this is why alongside the stages you can select, you will later probably also see that the panels change. This, I, this means the user does not have to give any thought to which panel he opens. According to the uh, stage, the document stage, this is preset. And this is why we gave a lot of thought of this step. The document stages will be fixed ones, um, the, the, the customers will be accustomed to it, and uh, we will familiarize the market with it because you not always need everyone's. And what this uh, works out like in, in in a digital case, is it possible to actually allow stage transitions by specific policies? Yes, it is. This actually has to do with the user rights and you can define workflows that orchestrate those transitions between the stages. So you have the flexibility for the user, but uh, when he's in content, content assignment, that said he's in containment and he can only assign content and he cannot actually add any notes or anything. This is to help the user to actually fulfill the right tasks. And this is um, why only the tools are provided for that particular stage. Yeah, Gabby, there's something new here too. Yes, there is a search function now. Let's open the next page. That's easier to see in the content area. This search can also be customized uh, to match the projects. Java methods can be written, uh, which uh, search for dynamic fields. And here, uh, these fields can be created dynamically, just the way you need them, whether you want to search by article number or by product name. So you can do it as you need it for each project. Uh, do we have a... Ah, this is... The uh, either only media assets, where are the sub buckets, the prices, and everything else you can select? Well, this is new actually. We referred to this as the Samar detail panel. So far, for the detail panel, you had all of the uh, sub buckets, and um, and uh, the user had to know uh, where am I allowed to assign something and what to really produce an effect. We've change this. On the template you can now lay down which detail panel you see. You can switch them off entirely or you can say this is a template where I can actually pick an image or several images and you can even, maybe you can, it's very small, but uh, it even reads how many images are to be selected. So the user gets the recommendation, yes, you can select one image, five images, any type of images or articles. Um, uh, this uh, actually simplifies matters for users. This is the whole idea in, by including this definition in the template. Uh, Gabby, you talked about uh, dynamic documents. They have a dynamic number. Yes, exactly. These are dynamic documents when we do list planning. So uh, the length and the uh, of the list decides uh, how many pages are generated when the document is built. But now we also can define static documents and uh, assign products to them. And uh, this is why they, we have the new grid planning. This is a new item in 4.3. Here you assign to each individual page a page template and then uh, to each element you can assign one or more products. 
and uh, you can also assign a tem template to the individual products. So this is the so-called basic perspective, basic view, where the individual products are only named, but of course you could also have a, an image displayed for each product to make it easier for the user to see what, what he's currently planning. And then uh, we have, yeah, it was a little too quick, far too fast. Yeah, this is where I wanted to go. This is the so-called print view. In this view, for each individual product, a preview is generated in the rendering program in InDesign is or PDF renderer depending on what you use for your project. Each individual product is uh, rendered so that the user can see what he will get or she will get afterwards in the document. This is uh, what we uh, uh, see in each individual document. What we can also see here is um, that the individual places in the documents, the spaces can also be edited. You can combine various spaces. This gives you more room for uh, particular products. And this allows you to actually uh, create the pages in a very different way. S where we're not, uh, w this um, is the 4.3 release, um, but uh, what also works is you can actually use drag and drop um, and you can also do it via uh, overview uh, and you can actually push it in um, through drag and drop. And we now also support documents that have many pages. So uh, you, you don't have to use double page documents only. You can actually do this for documents with six or eight pages. And this allows you to drag and drop to each page of these very quickly. What else do we have? Well, I already mentioned that we have uh, production monitoring now and uh, we have a Kanban board for this. You've probably heard about it. This is a possibility uh, originally from the automotive industry to control production processes. We have a Kanban board here now that uh, shows you in which stages the individual documents are for a production. Here you can see the various stages as I uh, mentioned and which documents are included which stage. You can look at them but you can also push on documents. You can take documents and push them from one stage to the next knowing that a task has already been performed. Um, do, do we have other possibilities to monitor production? Yes, um, we have here our task panel uh, it displays the tasks and there are two different possibilities to see them. For normal users they will only see their own tasks uh, but uh, those monitoring the project uh, um, will see all of the tasks that exist in the system. Here in this example there is no timeline but in the workflows, you can also define a timeline that shows you whether or when the task should have been performed or whether it uh, is uh, uh, time is due. Timo, the, your chance to win a mug. Do you want to adapt your question to uh, this screenshot? Whether I can link my workers with the stages, yes, and whether they're fixed or whether they can be configured. Yeah, I would phrase it exactly the same way. Oh, with such an excellent uh, question, you can actually hand on the mug to this well-dressed gentleman here at the back of the room. Yeah, I mean, uh, those who've understood that gag now or have not understood the gag were not at the last party. On the right-hand side, you can see the diagram of the individual workflows where the task features and at which point. So this is a standard workflow that we deliver with the system, so to speak. But uh, you can create any workflow. And with Neovice, we rely on Kamunda. This is a business process model engine. 
that actually uh, enabled so many things. It uh, can handle very complex workflows, define them in the graphical way. It's great. Once you uh, um, get to know in, uh, you know that Camunda can configure everything. Why Camunda and not the BPM and process engine? Well, this has a lot to do with the fact um, that uh, the print suite is a publishing tool, actually, and not actually as well. And we depart from the assumption that the data is 100% correct. We press the button, the push the button, there's one straightforward process and on demand without any mistakes. Why proofreading? Because we checked everything in the PIM system, after all. Solution. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the practitioner speaking. Rather not. But now, um, of course, the concept is that uh, we use various daughter sources, uh, not only content, content surf, but also um, other systems, that we collect these data and render them automatically. But there are uh, proofreading processes. And when we integrate several data sources, uh, whether the price is wrong, the image is wrong, or the attribute is wrong, how is the person who reads the proof to know in which of the systems this needs to be changed because the uh, the scenario a single source of truth um, system where you find everything is just uh, as realistic as proofreading cycle zero because there are several master data systems uh, that are managed in SAP others in other systems so how is the user supposed to know when he sees a rendered page with a mistake or an error how where to change it and they have to change it in, in the sources, not in the print suite. This would be insane. And this is why we say through the placeholders, through the templates, in our middle way, we know where this information comes from. We know this pretty well. And this is the vision. If he sees a mistake, um, this is wrong. Then he starts the Kamunda workflow, then actually triggers the right uh, system, PIM, SUP, or price calculation tool, or whatever system. And there we create the workflow. We found something. We will give you the context and please correct it. This is the vision um, of data integration to have a process hub so that uh, this can be integrated in other processes. This is one of the main reasons why we've invested a lot of money. And the second uh, reason is that it is the most proven workflow system and we have the free, uh, the complementary version on board and you can actually scale it and, and, and run it through separate servers. But when I think of my users, they don't have anything to do with the tool. They have a PDF document and they love to print it out to do the proofreading because uh, the review is usually done on paper. Uh, sorry, but um, and this is uh, why there's still a gap. I am happy when somebody actually inserts uh, corrections in the PDF file. Yes, no, yes, 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 no, no. It's very simple with us. <laughs> um, another reason why we do Kamunda, and uh, we don't know when, but uh, we do not know yet with which uh, collaboration tool we will start. But COVID um, has actually it has established many collaboration tools in organizations. We don't know whether we will start with Slack or with, with Microsoft Teams. Let's say it would be Teams. Then uh, we come to the document workflow and say review process then, Kamunda in Teams. In a Teams channel actually creates a task. We assign it maybe by email and there's a deep link in it included. And when you then uh, click on the deep link, then you're sent to the right uh, place of the flat plan and uh, to the editor where they can uh, uh, correct. So with Kamunda, 
we also want to integrate the collaboration tools because this is exactly the point. The person who does it, uh, speaking of catalogs, um, published once a year, twice a year at best, this person won't, this person won't learn the print suite. But we want to digitalize further. And this is why we use the collaboration tools within organizations. Supposedly, he works with Teams, with the Teams channel. And they have these buckets and index cards, and you have to click on them, and they include a description. And you click on this one, and he's learned, this person has learned this from, uh, from any other application. So, and deep link direct, yes, the deep link sends you to the right uh, space in the uh, flat plan, and open the right page is opened, and uh, this is no longer done on paper, of course, this needs to be online, but um, they can set notes right there. Hmm? What, we'll, we'll uh, come back to this a little later. Yeah, I will repeat the question. Ah, uh, the question was so good. Well, it good means it fit my concept so well. <laughs> Again, uh, what's uh, new about the task window? We now have an improved search function. Um, for filtering, well, we also support the display of service tasks so you, that you can do a monitoring on or what is uh, going on in, on the automatic side of things. And from user tasks, you will be able to jump to the flat plan, just as uh, uh, Horst mentioned it for Teams. I have my task here, and when I click on it, then there's a link, and when I click on the link, then I'm in the right place in the flat plan and can perform my task right away. This is the second possibility to monitor production. Oh, do we have anything new? Yes, something really smart, and that's the new dashboards, which can also be configured. Here, in the graphical way, you can have a display on the state of affairs of your publication. And the user task, for instance, of the same objects uh, that we saw in list uh, format can be shown here in a graphical way. And also in tables. Um, is it the whole publication? No, publication is one catalog. We, we refer to a publication as one catalog. Yeah, there are several answers to this in the back end today, in the 4.4 version, also in the front end. What can you monitor? You can monitor publication, but you can also monitor parts of the publication, the so-called folders. You can also, there are dashboards for document monitoring. So this is really versatile. Yes, and uh, it can be enhanced and extended. Java methods can be uh, written uh, that uh, actually um, have the data displayed that you want to have displayed. So you can actually expand it product specifically. Anything else? Uh, what else has changed? We've improved the push service. This is the system of bringing data into the data in the print suite. If you can't retrieve them directly from the system, then uh, we're constantly improving uh, security. Um, as soon as we hear anything or we realize problems, we fix them immediately, security issues. Then, great, uh, I'm very proud of this, is the single sign-on sign -on we can do now. So this means if you have an identity provider at your customer where users log in, then the uh, and using OpenID Connect, this is the protocol we've supported so far, then the user can also log in with this one. And what's so particularly nice about it, it also works with the commit. So also in InDesign you can log in via this uh, feature. And I'm very proud of this. And we also worked on the REST Connect so that all of the data can be displayed by this. Great. Gabby, uh, do you have an idea where Paul and Leo are? I don't know where Leo is. Maybe some of you are missing them uh, in the agenda. May I take over now? Yes, over to you now.
Leo and Vera. Vera works in uh, professional services. Leo is our lead developer for Illustrator. They um, have taken this uh, question. We're looking for new talents. They've taken this uh, virtually, um, verbally. <laughs> yeah, they're on a parental leave now. The birth is expected every day now. Uh, branding is uh, the the, the, <laughs> um, the romper is already on its way, and we really look forward to um, addition to our team in three or uh, two or three years. We will introduce plush keyboards uh, uh, very soon. And uh, dear Paul uh, thinks uh, that it is too cold here, and he's uh, drinking tea in Vietnam and other drinks uh, with our Vietnamese team, and this is why he couldn't make it in time. It uh, was impossible to, to make it happen. And this is why I am taking over for them. Well, uh, Gabby uh, already anticipated matters. Um, the single sign-on and what you see in the headline, this is very important. It applies to both the Illustrator and the uh, um, other uh, plugins. Um, and we also support the MCUs of the Max now, the uh, uh, architecture. Uh, who's a partner? All partners, hands up, please. Show of hands. Well, hey, Python support has been officially released now. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. Yeah, you're exhausted. You need a coffee, I know. Uh, Question of the mic. Yeah, Paul will do this. We, Leo and Paul will handle this. Uh, not everything is ready yet, but lots already. And five minutes ago, okay. <laughs> yeah, we started a little later. Um, the complex graph uh, that I will not explain for time reasons, and only for time reasons, has to do with uh, the fact that uh, from Python to JavaScript, uh, you can back and go get back and forth. In the UI, this is only InDesign. There are two new features. There is a dialog now uh, where you can actually adapt lead digits and you can actually configure it all and you can use drag and drop to change the sequence and then you can apply it in InDesign. And on the right hand side, there is a C script, there is a graphical sequence, and you can change the sequence by a click in InDesign. It's very sophisticated, but very very useful at times. And uh, this is uh, from the Hoffman Project. Uh, 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 greetings to the back of the room. This is uh, that we now have a function that can identify free spaces and they um, really identify free spaces even if the text frame runs on in the table and the system now knows whether this is transparent or white. So this is fantastic, a great thing for um, assigning additional content. The first feature is still that we can keep products together. So the one product um, should uh, be on the same page by a script. And this uh, can be defined now graphically, but also in product search. Templating. Uh, there is a fantastic uh, cool function. I don't know uh, who's done templating and layout rules uh, to apply to another frame. Now you can actually copy and paste layout rules uh, between frames and the current eDesign version is also displayed so you know which uh, um, InDesign version uh, produced this. Which We'll jump in here. What is this? Yeah, a table? Yeah, a table. You think you've won a mug with that answer? A table? Give me more. Yes, table is right, but not enough to win this mug. How did you come up with this answer? <laughs> Ooh. 
what is so special about a, a table in Illustrator? The special thing is that there are no tables in Illustrator. And we have now built an InDesign table function in the Illustrator for packaging, for instance. Um, we can build Illustrator tables um, uh, automatically now. You can also import uh, uh, via Excel and then you've got a formatted table. Then in the Illustrator, we've got uh, um, text find statements via scripts and the handling of the frame text. So when you actually want to fill frames with additional information and optimize them to be on the same uh, page with InDesign. And now to the question. What we're gonna do next? Uh, you wanna comment on this? Yeah, what's coming in the print suite? In uh, 4.4, the next release, uh, there will be a change of a uh, scheme of names in future. Every half a year, we will actually have a new release and the releases will be named accordingly. So this means the next release will be 23.1, 20, uh, 2023 number one. And um, unfortunately, we couldn't make it uh, for the beginning of the year, only for the middle of the year. And this is why the next release will only be out in 24. And then it will be called 24.1 and the next one 24.2. What's planned for the next release uh, for 24.1? Well, first of all, uh, we want to replace the planner 100%. All the functionalities available in the planner will be available in the new application. Not everything will be Neowise. There will be a separation. There will be be one admin application and there will be Neowise for the business users. So that Neowise is not so uh, overtaxed and overburdened with functionalities. Then uh, we will continue working on Kamunda to improve the experience, especially the monitoring and the functionalities and the dashboards. Um, uh, we want to have more widgets and uh, the, the uh, possibility that you can put the dashboard together graphically yourselves. Because uh, to actually configure dashboards, you would have to um, use Eason and not every user can do that. Uh, only few are able to do that. And this is uh, will be enabled so that each user can put together his or her own dashboard. Right. And uh, this is our release scheme planned so far. Every six months, there will be a new release. And the next one is scheduled for January 24. And in summer, the next one will follow. C Carolina, how many hours do we have for the questions? Uh, have you understood her? I haven't. Three hours, you said? No, we had some, some questions in between. We please repeat. Questions. Yeah, they, they asked all the questions in between during the presentation. There are people who are still using 4.8. Oh, what about the migration? It's simply an update. The only point is when you want to use the new grid planning and you used to use the layout planning before the layout briefing module, then the data needs to be converted. We're busy automating this right now, but the data have changed slightly. So once I do the transfer to the new system, then I can't go back. Okay, you can do a backup of the data and, and then you can actually fall back but to the old data. But otherwise you just uh, run an update. Uh, the old workflow engine? No problem, no problem with that. So you would have to redo it completely. Well, that's the honest technical answer. Now the commercial answer is yes or no. Regarding the definition, no, no, no. No, seriously speaking, uh, you have to redo it and you have to also think in other terms. The Java methods uh, 
uh, that, that are called up through the old workflow system can be also called up through an annotation. So the Java programming backend is not lost. So we've really incorporated this so we can use the old workflow methods. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can reuse them. Well, then nothing for us left to do. The only thing left for us to do is to say thank you.